<laughs> Welcome to the Trinita cast. This is episode number 69. We are recording on the 9th of June. 2024 when i was the number the episode titan irish number 69 i remember that when you're teaching a class of students you can't use numbers you can't work out any sum that does end up end up with 69 and for a while i was yeah. lost i was very very lost oh i didn't know oh, um yeah, no very innocent yeah my <laughs> my 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 mind and my brain just that doesn't be on them thing now so uh, when you do that and all sort of boys start a snicker and oh, well, I teach in girls and girls start a snicker too. I was like, hmm, interesting. All right, there must be something about this. And then of yeah. course when you Google it, it's like, oh, right, right. So wait, right. you had to Google it, you then you then know. I kinda I kinda put two and two together. However, yeah. so I right, j- right. how how long to be ago sure. was this? This was, <laughs> was like this recent or now this was like twenty seventeen. That recent, yeah. So you were like an adult and didn't notice. <laughs> no, I yeah, for real, yeah. Like, okay, I I, I, I knew I this since together. like yeah, my teenage years mm-hmm. of earlier. <laughs> it was yeah, it was it was yeah. it was weird. So for those of not you, not a good who, thing, not a good thing. Your mind not contaminated like well, mine was, when you yeah. when you're teaching, your mind should be contaminated enough to know now to know yeah. not to to miss that thing, but. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is um, episode 69. And what happened this week? Oh, I didn't tell you. What. My birthday was yesterday. And, okay, um, happy birthday. Thanks. Uh, but I don't usually yeah. tell anybody that my birthday is. Most people who know, if you know, you know, just tell my happy yeah, birthday. Yeah. And everybody else, they just be like, because I ain't gonna lie to you. So you, the, what, you believe in our whole hor- um, horoscope thing? Zero. Zero yeah, belief in horoscope, well, right? Here's what, Gemini? If I were to believe in horoscopes, yeah, yes, yeah. I'd be I a Gemini. Yeah. But um, what I what I kind of realize is that with social media, when your birthday come up and you're on Facebook, everybody just just yeah, <laughs> they just birthday. yeah 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 go wild out there. and then you have this obligatory kind of. Thank you. Th- thank you to everybody who said happy birthday. And yeah. I, me personally, yeah. I I don't want an obligatory happy birthday from people. Even though they may be genuine, even though they may be good people, even though there's not a, it's not a bad thing that that happening or all or, or, or whatever the case is. Yeah. I, I like the happy birthdays from people who know you. And they will send you like a message with some sort of sarcastic thing or something that pertains to you, and yeah, they will yeah. be, and they will be very um, it will be almost like tailored to you know, yeah, so like no, have f- um, no generic happy birthday message yeah, that people yeah. you know all, all people, the best you know the old, yeah, yeah. You know, some of the older people will send the um it's the because, good morning message yeah and yes yeah. yes yes yeah <laughs> so I I personally I have a partner yeah. send my message all the time and it's be like. Your knees could tell when you rain when rain come in yet. Uh, that would be the best happy birthday message. You don't you don't even have to say happy birthday. He just knows yeah, it's my yeah, birthday. Yeah. And the only thing that you tell me is your knees could could predict the weather yet. And that'll be fun now. So yeah, that's um that's what happened to me this week. Other than nothing techy. Mm. What what about uh, you? What are you doing? Oh yeah, you're on vacation. Me? Vacation? No. I still have another term exams to do. Oh, school, school, okay, okay. school, school. Have three more weeks. The hardest part of school starting now, which is exams and marking papers. But we get in there. I'll, I'll be on vacation in four weeks. Yeah, this week had a lot of meetings. So me was meetings. Not much work get done, but a lot of meetings and dealing with people and difficult people. That will I will see. The <laughs> you know what. Yeah, it's not something I enjoy too much. I'll be doing work and yeah, getting stuff done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, and dealing with the politics. That that is a real big bother, especially when you know how to solve the problem. But yeah, the the problem is not sometimes, being solved because some people just creating a different problem. Yeah, sometimes you just feel like 
Is this shit the best you saw my time? Because <laughs> yeah. you are important. Your time is worth something, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Cool, cool, cool. So welcome to the to the show, y'all. We have a, a packed show. First one is a big one, which is we're going to be talking about Tobago Internet should be getting better now because Digicel has launched their new subsea fiber cable. We'll talk about that and I'll tell you about the whole the semi-viral post that I had on Instagram and all that kind of drama and, <laughs> how, and what that means. Um, would employees use wellness apps? For some reason, we found an article about people using wellness apps to make employees like feel better about themselves or be more productive, which I'm not too sure going to happen because apps, employees, people, I'm not too sure, but we will see how that goes. And then Microsoft backtracks on screenshots in your life. <laughs> we spoke about this a few weeks ago. And um yeah, they're gonna not do the screenshot thing. And then we have a real funny article. We had it we had to slip this one in about the um the US cricket team. <laughs> it's well, US and Inverted, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The US cricket team. There's a techie part to the US cricket team because the T twenty World Cup is going on right now. So we'll talk about it and, and you'll see how that goes, right? So let me go into the first story, which is quite important, which Digicel is launch, um, finally launched their undersea cable for Tobago. So Tobago internet should be better now. In theory, Tobago should have better internet because Digicel finally launched their undersea cable that will provide internet to Tobago, Guyana, French Guyana, and Suriname. And well, it connected to Trinidad and Tobago also. If you remember last few weeks, we had a story about the fiber optic cable that linking Toko to Tobago, it was compromised by a bushfire. Apparently, that may not happen again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so? if it does happen, they would have redundancy, you know, meaning, yeah, you'd, the entire island wouldn't be <laughs> cut off from civilization. I have a, I have a, a little spin on it, but let me get to the article and then we'll talk a little more about it, right? So <laughs> here's the article. Um, Digital Group on June 4th announced the activation of its subsea fiber cable, Deep Blue One, describing it as a significant investment in international submarine capacity that will supercharge connectivity across the Caribbean and South America. Um, it said the system will particularly benefit French Guyana, Suriname, Guyana, and Trinidad and Tobago and that its advanced fiber cable network could provide seamless connectivity with the countries it serves, facilitating uninterrupted communication and real-time data transmission. And it also, it allows you to connect offshore gas rigs and supporting the energy sector because apparently oil rigs and must have internet problems too and there's rely on satellite, maybe Starlink, I don't know. Yeah. So they, they launched it and it's connected now, it's working. When we did our podcast, I don't know, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, we spoke about we spoke about Tobago having no redundancy. Oh wait, have a, have a, um the loop article has an actual image of it. So I'm gonna show you the image one. Um yeah, so this is the image of it. So you can clearly see it running from French Guyana, Suriname, Guyana, running across up to Tobago. When it drop off on Tobago, it come to Port of Spain and Trinidad, right? So Yep. There would be two the I want to let me see if I can get the submarine cable map on for it. Um what do you think about it like just off the bat? Like, yeah, I mean it's a good thing and I and I'm pretty sure I'm probably hundred percent sure is it didn't happen because of the incident that happened in Tobago. There's way too way too it's not humanly possible that they, they do this in response to that, you know, it's something that was in the works a oh, while yeah. and you know it Correct. just happened that it come right after that incident. So it it kind of, it line, line up nicely in terms of providing Tobago that redundancy that they, 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 they would need, you know, yeah. as, as a, you know, as any, any island, any country, well, not country, but any island that would need. They can't just, in this, in 2024, they can't just be reliant on one, you know, connection. Cause I mean, everything, Everything connected these days. Mm -hmm. You need um, connectivity. 
the hard redundancy yeah so the the map is it's specifically owned by digicel it says the blue one and yeah just basically joining everybody up there are other some there are some other cables in between here that one connecting to guyana and serena already but there's two connected now if we were to think about this from a business perspective this is the, this is the part that i would want to talk about mm -hmm. in tobago i am not 100 percent sure that you could sign up for digicel you sure uh well if you're signing up for digicel what connection would they have used? They would have been piggybacking of the um um well, the, TSTT, the, the TSTT um, lines. I I mean I would think that after operating, so yeah, they have connectivity and and um. You mm, could you could you could get in Crown Point. <laughs> I'm looking at the connectivity map. Okay. I'm not sure if this is mobile or um, this yeah. is mobile. I'm mobile coverage. Yeah, I am not a hundred percent sure that there is somebody could correct me by looking at these stores. In there are two stores in Tobago, right? But they might be mobile stores. I'm not too sure if internet. Because the last time I went to Tobago and I had to do some work for somebody there, it's flow yeah. and be mobile. You had, to, you had to connect with Blink, actually. They had Blink. And the only other person that I saw had flow. So somebody could could, could confirm that to, mm. to me, right? If there's wired. In, in the sign-up form, they have mm -hmm. Tobago as one of the possible, well... The cities they have is Tobago, East and West. That's the okay. cities. Okay, okay. I don't know. Like All right. Well then, um, if it is if it is possible to sign up for it, which of course I could have been wrong, they would have been piggybacking on the TSTT cable. Yeah. To provide the internet, so they would have some sort of um, contract in place where they would give they would sell people internet and they would use the TSTT cable so they're renting on the TSTT cable which is known to fail from Toko to wherever it is they're going to right in Tobago yeah. now they have their own cable so now Digicel is going to be able to offer services directly linked to their fiber backbone now. So, you know I wanna, I wanna say you know, as you're talking about business, you think did you sell miss a trick in terms of now piggybacking on that whole incident that happened to try and, you know, show off B Mobile a little bit and say, hey, look, we solve oh, any problem. Oh, it's no, I I'm positive it's coming. I'm positive it's coming no, because it's right it now. Should I come already? No, 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 no. Right now, they just yeah. have connectivity. But mm -hmm. once once you I mean, you would probably understand better. Like, the engineers would more than likely tell the marketing people, shut up. Yeah. Don't say anything yet. Don't go and try to do anything yet. Let me just make sure this thing working properly. Let's go through. We launch it. We get the connectivity. And then the marketing team will come and be like, yeah, so we could start now. And I'd be like, all right, marketing team. Good. We, we've done all the checks. Because if the marketing team jumped the gun and then... They say, well, yeah, our our internet is superior because we have this cable and whatnot, and then the cable ain't connected properly. That'll be mm -hmm. a problem. So I mean, uh, the, the uh, went yeah. to the media already, so it kind of out there. I mean, right. I mean, so I tell it coming. If it you launch a whole marketing campaign, it'll be on a big. They'll bring in influencers. You'll see ads on social media, whatever, whatever. But I don't, I don't know. You'll see. Maybe, maybe they just, they just let. Come along. Nah, did you sell petty? No, did you sell petty enough? They, 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 they petty enough. Based on, based on the things over there, you said do about the green network and all kind yeah. of thing. That I've, I've probably would think that they petty enough to now come and say, yeah, Tobago finally has good internet. Yeah. Or they might have an actual problem where they have the fiber cable that's connected, but the infrastructure of running fiber on land might be not as strong as they want it to be because, mm -hmm. well, they never had a chance to. All those things they could think about, all those things they could speculate. But I think Tobago has a good chance now of having 
um, solid internet that is redundant and companies might have a better chance of saying, all right, here, go, let me go with Digicel instead because their fiber yeah. are newer and yeah. doesn't get caught they'll in bushfires. Like, uh, yeah, don't let, don't let a bushfire ruin your internet <laughs> experience. <laughs> yeah, according to Submarine Cable Map, it's coming in on um, Rockley B. Yeah, yeah. And the other one so, from the other yeah. one from thing coming in on Pigeon Point, I think the the yeah Pigeon Point is where the TSTT one landing and Rockley Bay is where the the Digicel one landing. So it the Pigeon Point one closer to the point of Tobago where I don't know, but Rockley Bay is a little lower down, which will be closer to like Scarborough side. So I guess it would be more I don't know. It, it would be into going straight into a more business oriented area now. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm looking for for the um for your vi- the vi- kind of semi viral video. Oh, I'm looking for the car. Can you remember the comment? The guy the guy was asking again. Oh <laughs> gosh boy, that's not trying to remember. It has so much comments on that. So so for those of you listening, we the video that we put up on social media about this Tobago internet relying on right, one cable. I find it, I find it. it what it is <laughs> the difference between Wi Fi and internet should be studied. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um railway those kinda come coming on that video and I just had to be like, Whoa, what are you talking about? And then after I realized the response was weird, I just kind of pull out, pull away, and I was like, "Nope, me ain't bothering to talk to you." But um, the video ended up getting like fifty five k on yeah, on Instagram yeah, yeah. or something like that. On TikTok, it was like twenty. It's very rare that a video on Instagram does better than a video on TikTok because TikTok just built for going viral now. But once a video on Instagram go viral, jeez, this is the first time I actually experienced a uh, Instagram video going viral. It has last for weeks whereas on tiktok your video go viral four days you hit a 60k you'll hit a 70k and then yeah, you just yeah, flatline yeah. after that yeah on instagram weeks after that thing still sharing and people saying hey i see a video and i like what video like yeah, yeah. you want to talk about the internet i was like what that's still sharing around but yeah um so if if digicel is well the company that we've come to know, they're going to milk this and they're going to mm-hmm. start to promote their internet services on the island because obviously they can't, they will stop using the TSTT cable, which is an older fiber optic cable, and this one is newer. And in the article, they're real touting about new sustainable technologies and um, economic outcomes and all these different things. But it's not just to be going to have benefit, you know. Them go and start to work that Guyana and um yep, that Guyana. especially Guyana. Yeah, that Guyana line. And I would want to believe that this was definitely strategic to be like, yeah, Guyana is a place that we want yep. to be connected to fast because Some, uh, oil money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because these companies go and want fast internet. Yep. And as far as it stands, Guyana has a link to a cable that goes to. Barbados that was done in 2019 and then they have a link to a cable that goes to Trinidad that was done in 2010 so Guyana has three internet cables coming into it now whereas it was only two before and that's a that's a sign of connectivity growth options businesses looking to get their self online they're trying to get um trying to get services, cloud storage, services, all, all those different things. Because, well, mm-hmm. oil money does do that here. Oil money does float all boats. Because yeah. once, once the oil money in, the economy starts to rise because the government is able to spend money on doing more things. When they're able to spend money on doing more things, companies now start to get more contracts because they're trying to develop the place. And when they're trying to develop the place, your development is always going to have technology inside of it. That's just economics 101. That's why Trinidad economy is um is the way it is right now because we don't have no oil money right now. So they're trying their very best to find ways to stimulate the economy by investing very, very strategically. And they're trying their best to invest it in technology because, well, after oil, the only thing you have is technology or agriculture and 
for some reason. Yeah, I mean, you're probably more hopeful than me, but in terms of Trinidad economy, I kind of pessimistic. <laughs> I'm not sure. Well, I know just, so we outlook it and be the next five to ten years. Well, they talk about natural gas the other day, and well, when you start to talk about natural gas, you just be like, and what happens when we don't have the natural gas anymore? And yeah. I don't know, I don't know what else will happen. We foreign reserves in terms of US, it's yeah. at all time low. Yeah, know, sorry, I am a free. Po- I know we kind of diverge a little bit, but the the the, the IMF had a report and the finance minister kind of talk up a lot of the good parts, you know, in terms of, yeah, the economy rebounding, the GDP and whatever, but a big part of the report that he glossed over where the IMF kind of came down on us was that, hey, all they need to do something about all their forex situation and they recommend floating the dollar, like, you know, increasing the yeah, um, yeah, 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 the exchange rate. So that that part of it ain't changed in terms of, and it directly tied to the whole oil and gas situation because that's where most of the forex used to come in. So if that's not there, the forex at an all, all time low. Yeah, but all right, the well, if we high, the supply low. If we on the economy train, might go higher. Yeah, for those of you all expecting uh, us to talk about technology, be here with me for the next two and a half minutes, right? <laughs> We're going to make somebody from the United States send, buy something down here for us in US, from us in US. Services. Good. The services that we provide is either tourism or what? I think we could do consultant services or we, we have we have some products like the big big companies as export stuff mm-hmm. like manufacturing and whatever, whatever, whatever right smaller companies say smaller companies service based companies they could do like the only thing come to my mind quite in this industry is IT based IT consultant IT consultant or something you could right exactly export. so when I said that after oil and gas, the only thing that you could invest in is really um, yeah. technology or agriculture. Because big US companies, they're looking for cheaper labor everywhere. That is why they're laying off people all over. And yeah, I, for those of you listening, I was coming back to it and I was coming back to it. I know you're going to say but. I know you're going to say but. Because that is why there's higher people from India. We're going to yeah. talk about that when we, we reach the last story, right? We can't yeah. compete with right? India. Just know, we <laughs> can't <laughs> compete with India. We can, but yeah. if we if we able to show that we could produce a, a high level of technological acumen when it comes to implementing technologies, they will come and be like, yeah, you see them people from Trinidad, hire them because they're going to take less money than our US people and, and they're know, closer. Yeah. And the, the fact next, that- next part yeah. I to- Face step back a little bit, right? Our next yeah. part is to a lot of the, a lot of our brightest minds and people who's really excelling in in the technology space become engineers and whatever. whatever. They don't stay mm. here, you know. Because we have a lot of Chinese when you're, when you're going through LinkedIn. I know you're really, you're not really familiar. Mm. <laughs> when they go through LinkedIn, we have a lot of people working in AWS, in Google, in Microsoft. Who's engineers, who's managers, and whatever. And they look at the track, some of them used to work digital, some of them used to work Caribbean Airlines. And a lot of mm-hmm. them, once they reach that certain level, they just leave. Right. Now, what it will take, hear yeah, out, it will take a, um, a exodus of expats from US mm-hmm. going back to their countries, taking their experience, forming companies. And then those U.S. companies now subcontracting them to do jobs from their homeland. And you pay them in U.S. Because that is what does happen right. in India. In India, it's always, it always have a small company. Yeah, and yeah, that's, yeah. that small company has somebody who worked or studied in America. And they get a little link with Oracle and they created their own startup. And then yeah. now they sold their services to, I don't know, create a telecom, um, telemarketing something or to do some sort of, not fishing, but do some sort of server-side work for them or something like that. Yeah, that's, 
that is either that agriculture, you know. It's either that agriculture. Oh, it's tourism, sorry. Tourism or agriculture. But the tourism part of it, we ought to be able to start to accept their payment methods other than cash. Yeah, so going, if, back to, yeah. going back to the idea, right, about, yeah. you know, people with the knowledge and the experience coming back, going back to the countries like India and forming their comp- you know, own companies based yeah. on our wealth and knowledge and experience on those, probably the fan companies or whatever, right? Yeah. At this moment in time, do you think in terms of the ratio, in terms of people wanting to come back to Trinidad versus wanting to leave. How attractive is Trinidad right now in terms oh, of no. that, well, that type of dynamic? <laughs> it's not about Trinidad being attractive, you know, it's about America kicking you out. That's the, no, that's, well, that's the hard part. I, well, all right. How much people are actively trying to leave Trinidad versus you think that want to I, come back? <laughs> I understand what you're saying, you know. We, I just trying to give you the only way to yeah. work out. The, well, I mean, the, the right, if you at that, that at that level where you work your way up, and you um, and you at the level where you could, where you at at those type of levels, most times you would have like a green card or residency. Yeah, you would. Yeah, you would. Yeah, you, know? yeah, you so would. Yeah, you could stay and do other stuff. You know, and if the government, could, yeah, if the, if the government creates some incentivizes people to to do those kind of things and say, yeah, if you come to Trinidad and you create this yeah. company, such and such is the case, just like how oil and gas companies were incentivized to come here. Be like, if yeah. you come here and set up your thing, you will get this, you'll get whatnot. Right. All you have to do is pay us 25% of your, your profits. No, no, yeah, yeah. This, right? If I yeah. was in that position where, let me say, you still work in Trinidad, but you get recruited by a company in, in the States. You, you know, you're working at one of those Amazon or not even Amazon, but like you're getting a good salary, say 200K a year or whatever, right? Mm. It's not nothing the government could tell me to get me to come back here. Yeah? But the and US government could tell you something, no? What are you going to tell me? If I, was a, if I was a permanent resident, you know, yeah, and like, yeah. say even after five years, you get citizenship. No, yeah, it they they could you know, they could change that. Me, they could nah, change the, that. They can Tr- change that. No, they, they no they could change that. that. They could change that going forward. They could change that going forward. Cause Trump on them, that's be trying to do that. Biden nah, and them, you can't tra- you can't just change. They could probably make it harder to become one, but that would you have to go through Congress and I don't think yeah it yeah all, yeah. All, yeah. All and fun, uh, but and the state that the state that America in right now. Anything is possible. Yeah, but the state that Trinidad in right now, son, I know. Son. Uh, I talk to a lot of people during the weekend, whatever, whatever. A lot of people <laughs> ready to leave. And so I, it goes both ways. I, I agree and I understand, but I have hope. I have hope. <laughs> I'm teaching students. I want to go yeah. to my students and I tell them, listen, I have hope. Don't just do just take everything you have on and, and ship out. But and some of them must do it and I'll be like, hey, you gotta do what's best for you. Yeah. But I have a I have a little hope because we have three things to rely on after gas. Tourism, agriculture, and tech services. <laughs> if <laughs> if if we rely on tourism, then we had a deal with the crime issue. Yeah. If we have to rely on agriculture, we had a deal with the stupidity of of people who have grown up on oil and gas and not willing to invest not, the, not the, just, the amount of time that it takes. Yeah, not just that, but we need to you know, the whole culture shift called people, yeah. how much young people you know going to want to go into agriculture. Exactly. Well, you, we had one, you, you, we had one set of agro, agribusness degrees. Yeah, I, don't, no, I don't know if they still exist or anything like that. No, because it's there, but yeah, you gotta have a sustained, a you know, right? You gotta have a sustained, a um, a sustained push from the from the government over a period of time. Not just to say, well, I'm gonna give you a grant so that you could plant um watermelons. No, you gotta mm-hmm. be able to be like, I'm gonna give you a grant. We're gonna bring equipment. We're gonna create one of them super duper large size fields that have a um a machine that are picking it for you and all that kind of thing. That requires government input for so, like. 10 years straight. So you remember earlier, we talk about technology and similar thing, you know, trying to export a technology product and having to compete with India. Yeah. When you go into agriculture, it's a similar thing. 
you yeah. we doing it at a certain scale, but a couple mile a few miles south, our country is like Brazil. Yeah, 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 at yeah. a much bigger scale. They have few the cheaper. size of Trinidad, yeah. They, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> way cheaper. So, so or oh, Guyana, way cheaper. If we produce our product, say it's ten dollars and Brazil selling it for five dollars at a on a at a, at a bigger scale. How yeah. we compete in with that? So well, the, that the whole, as well, the whole goal is to get the foreign exchange. Well, at some point in time, we had a girl self-sustaining and be like, okay, we don't have to rely on this foreign exchange to live because there's there's enough self-sustaining stuff that going on inside now. And yeah, if if we if you do have to spend all the US to get services from outside, then you might have a better chance. So if we have our internal tech companies like D-Hub and these people who do, do this kind of stuff, you pay the people in TT and you don't have to go and pay pay all the US to a company from Nashville, Tennessee because you, you keep the foreign reserves now. But I told you it would be two and a half minutes. But yeah, if the talk. people in D-Hub decide, yeah, Trinidad is not for me. Well... What you gonna do, boy? They will go. But if the people in the hub decide to build a product and they showcase it and it and it does well, and some mm-hmm. US company come and says, Yeah, we want to subcontract you all to create an office first down there for this accounting software. Y'all think y'all could be a part of the team and yes, we will pay the US and all the taxes and thing. Well, the the company have to decide how they're going to Yeah, yeah. How they're going to roll with that kind of arrangement now, but yeah, all this happens because there's a digital fiber cable that is going to Tobago. <laughs> just, just to remind you all, more connectivity means more opportunities. So that was, that was Economics Tech 101 from Akeem and Andre. Let's go on to our next story about employees using wellness apps because I do believe it makes sense to give employees an app to make them feel better about their job. Have you ever tried to order something online using a Visa debit card but you can't? Is shopping online something you always do already using a Skybox but sometimes you need advice on knowing what to buy or what will work? I'm Mr. Charles from Make It Simple TT and we aim to make technologies that solve problems in a Caribbean context. So we created Order It. What is it, she asked. What is Order It? It's an app and a website that helps you order it in two ways. The first way is if you already order things online. You're familiar with using a skybox, you're familiar with using a credit card, but sometimes you don't always have answers to certain questions. Like which laptops will get a warranty in Trader, which phones will work on the Digicel network or the mobile network. So our app helps you order it. Every product that we list in the app, we will let you know the truth based on the experience of 20 years of ordering things online and using various skyboxes in Trader and Tobago. So here are some of the questions that the app answers for you based on the products that we list. What are the taxes? Why does it cost so much when I actually get it? What is dimensional weight? All these questions and more, we answer in the app because we want to help you order it. All you have to do is simply pick from our list of recommended items that we know and trust because we've ordered it already. Follow through the payment process, we'll order it and we can even have it delivered to you. So why don't you give it a try? Search for Order It by Make It Simple TT in the App Store or the Google Play Store, or you can even go online to orderit.makeitsimplett.com and check and see if we could answer some of your questions and help you in the process of ordering it. So, the next article is quite, quite weird, interesting. I don't know. Would you use an app to help you with your life if your boss comes and says hey um we're doing this thing in our company now download this app we've created an account for you go use it and you should feel better about your job or if you're feeling sad use this app and then come to work would you would you even care (laughs) what do you want we want more money if we get more money (laughs) <laughs> we don't need to have wellness because you could deal with the wellness at home because you could buy a 75-inch TV, right? <laughs> no, uh, go ahead, go ahead. What's your article, right? 
Fake health news can lead to increased stress, misinformation, and poor health decisions among employees impacting the overall wellness. This in turn can lead to exorbitant medical bills and even underutilization of employee assistance programs as employees may not trust or fully understand the available resources. In this vein, Patient Connect, a leading digital health company in America, has launched Health Ed in TNT, an alliance for digital health education and literacy. Our mission as this is to provide culturally appropriate health information specifically tailored for the TNT and Caribbean audience helping individuals make informed health decisions. And I don't know where this comes from, what is the goal, but mm, the president of the Human Resources Management Association of TNT, HR Matt, which I didn't know was a, I didn't even know was a thing, Cavell Joseph St. Omer. Also, we did in on how digital health services like wellness apps can improve employee behavior and access to mental health services. All right. The mental health services, I could understand. The employee behavior, no. No. Nobody wants an app to tell them how to behave. I, I... So, all right. What's the difference between this and just using chat GPT to... Okay, health information or whatever. ChatGPT is not tailored to you. <laughs> ChatGPT, you have to work to get it prompt. Hey, that's now uh, add a tangent on this. Add a tangent on this. Students, <laughs> mm. students, lazy, you know. Like, I talking about proper, proper lazy. Like, I know students, I'll be like, yeah, just take the multiple choice question and type it into ChatGPT and um, it'll give you a, a detailed answer. They'll be like, so I know gonna type all that up. I was like, it literally gonna answer it for you now, and you will get a good answer. Yeah. Nah, I write too much to type up. So I was like, what you want? I'd rather be able to take a picture of it, it read the text, and then give me the answer. And I was like, you know, it could do that too. Yeah, like yeah, but you had to take a picture, and sometimes it does miss somebody's words. I was like, way, <laughs> way. So yeah. Back to your answer. Maybe, Why would you people not use yeah. maybe that's what to spark that that is what'll spark the next um stage in innovation, you know. Somebody who thinking like that was like, yeah, let me get something that could really just make this hundred times easier. So it's not good, it's not a bad thing all the time. At so some point, they, at they some point you must have you must have to work at some point. But like we're trying to we're trying to get to the point where we do not have to work, but we were created to work. There's some element of putting in the work that you had to do. You had to do. Yeah. Anyhow, back to the story. What you was going to say? I forget. All we'll stop them no, from using ChatGPT. Yeah, well, whatever. All right, it's saying it going to uh, provide you with advice, good health yeah. advice. That put well, of course, yeah, using AI. to the region or whatever. Yeah, so the, what they do, they train a model based on what? Like, what? 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 What Trinidad or Caribbean health specific data to train it with that gonna make it so useful from anything else out there? Nothing. Um oh wait, wait, wait. Do we have any data sets? No time no data sets. I uh, no the work, of, of course we know the word AI was thrown in because it's a nice buzzword. Um yeah. let me see what it actually said about the AI part. I'm gonna, I'm gonna not misquote it. He mentioned the use of Continuous glucose monitoring devices for type 1 diabetics and AI-assisted eye screening devices. Okay, it wasn't the AI, it wasn't about the app. AI was for eye screening. So there is no AI in the app. It's just, it's just a mental health app that will give you access to counseling services. So it's like, it's almost like WebMD. Like, do you feel sad? Click here. Are you sad every day or just two days of the week? Click here. Are you sad after you do something or whatnot? So it'll be kind of deterministic and then in the end it'll be like, call this number. Or click here to chat to this person. I don't know. Yeah. From as yeah. simple as creating niche topics such as mental health or vaccines, you can develop learning systems, learning models, and learning algorithms that can help drown fake news and alternative facts. Through technology, we can analyze the influence of social media on health, misinformation, and disinformation and seek to intervene with the truth. It it sounds like it sounds like if you, if you look a little higher up they say that patient connect 
builds AI assisted well, wellness apps for companies and organizations using Omni, which is a first AI, which is the first AI trained and developed in TNT. So it is using I don't believe. <laughs> Uh, the first AI that trained and developed in TNT Omni. Let me Google that. <laughs> I'm going to find out what. Omni AI. If I just put Omni AI TNT, I should get something, right? I hope so. Um... Tenth of January, twenty twenty four. It's uh, artificial intelligence has become a transformative uh, and favorite doctor. Da, 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 da. He also contributed. Da, 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 da. It is a thing. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, overall, it 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 it's one of the to be there as a tool for um staff that need it you know but i don't think it should be some mandatory because if you come and give me that and i don't need it it's like i'm not gonna yeah but this. okay let me let me try to let me try to like you know think about what use case or what can they do to make you want to use it tell I you mean, it's, when, it's part of your when job it, spec. say you're genuinely having a hard time with your work, you can handle it, you're under stress, you have deadlines, or stuff affecting your home, a certain dynamic with your boss, somebody victimizing you. I don't know, some, you know, and it gets into you. I don't know, I think in more psychological than, than actually a health issue. If you have a health related to this, you go and see a doctor, you know. But mm. in terms of mental health, that's where it probably thing but as you say it's not really AI it, it, it kind of tower AI lay and then it it might direct you to so, like a resource or something yeah to a resource yeah I watch an article here um <coughs> from oh yeah I went to school with this guy Kern Elliott yeah I went to school with him he he have a medium post it's very hard to find a training with a medium post so we have to upload that because if oh, it, yeah, if I think it, I if saw, go, I saw if that go, too. If you go and ask the average human was, a, was medium, and they'd be like, what? Medium is not large and not small. The key differentiator is that Omni has been trained on data specific to train and Tobago local data training allows it to understand local concept and makes more relevant recommendations. For instance, Omni knows how to suggest a beach slime as a wellness activity, something a generic chatbot would miss. <laughs> Sorry, the yeah. The AI training has been done entirely by Patient Connect's team in Trinidad. So the it's stored on web Amazon Web Services with user privacy and yeah, Patient Connect is focused on a B two B model, making Omni available to employers through partnerships with HR associations and thing. All right, so this is uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, I'm always listening to like on some. Like YouTube videos, or whatever, they might be sponsored by an app called Better Help or something. Yes, yes, Better Help, yeah. Yeah, yeah I know about that, yeah. So it's probably something similar to that, but you're not talking to an actual person, but you're talking to the AI. Okay, if we if we break it down a little bit, the average user, not going to use this. Like, you're not going to get anybody from off the street to use it. So this has to be done company, company wise, or company per, from a company perspective perspective and the hr department has to literally say you know like how we have eap employee assistance programs in all companies and if you're going through whatever you're going through you can get time off to go to the eap and all those different things that's that's you know about that like that's a thing in private companies i know i think in government i know i think it is i think it is somewhere but like in government companies um, EAP is a thing and you could get access to a counselor um, or a assistant or a psych- not a psychiatrist but anyway and you could get time off from work because you have to deal with your issue and you could do that if it's if it's implemented like that now they'll just tell you yeah download this app and use that and yeah but 
Like if somebody genuinely going through something, I don't want to talk. You go talk to the after to an extent and I mean it might advise you, yeah, but I don't I don't know how effective it will be. That come like you have problem, you having issues, say you not know, mental health, you having all that type of issues and you go to chat GPT for it to give you advice. I don't think you should I mean well, all right, so like what was the value proposition for I don't know. I don't know. I <laughs> really, <laughs> like, I know that was the question I go and ask because that's the question that you should ask. If I run in a company, what is going to make me pay, let's say, for example, a hundred thousand dollars a month yeah. so that I could use this in my organization and know that my money is going to, I'm going to get value for money. I yeah. cannot think of a, a reason because if my employee is going through problems, I'm not going to send them to an app to start the process of fixing that problem. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, let's sit and talk. And yeah. if you don't want to talk to me, here are some numbers that we have of um, counselors that we have on on file or on demand that we've worked work with in the past. Um make some calls, schedule yeah. a session, we will pay for it. That's, that's, that's the best value proposition I could see. But the, the layer of having the app in between, I, I can't see it. Um, Maybe I, it's I, a I tool we could use before you, before that step, before you actually reach to talking to the person, you know, just again, not, before I reach to like heavy and drastic rate of it really affecting you know that's real light advice well again if value proposition but yeah just real light advice or maybe or maybe it's like a, a you have a training session and yet you give the employees some incentive for achieving a particular milestone in the app like if you gamify it a little bit and then you'd be like well employees who 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 uh, interact with this app on a regular basis based yeah. on your score or some kind of thing like that, you get a, a mental I, health I would rather bonus. my employees do the work. <laughs> <laughs> I try and I try and I try. I really, I really don't know what to say. I really don't know yeah. what to say. I can't, I can't see it. But somebody putting um, effort behind it and there's a there's a partnership taking place and is it a waste of money i don't know i really can't say but mm, yeah no 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 um if i were an employer i i don't see the value proposition so we'll just leave it right there and we'll see how that goes maybe somebody might send our comment and let us know if it's been implemented in their organization and if they see it or some kind of thing like that. Um, because, I don't know. I tell you, I put the podcast on like everywhere. All mm -hmm. all them other podcast catchers. Tune in radio, um, pocket cast, a anywhere that the podcast could be. I told you I was going to do that a while ago. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, 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 sure yeah. Yeah, I think we talk, I think we talk about it. I actually did it. I actually did it. I, I put it on my to-do list. And I knock it off one afternoon. I spend two hours on that RSS feed. Yeah. Just put our RSS feed everywhere the RSS feed could go. <laughs> and somebody, somebody sent a message. Oh, that's when you're talking about YouTube, having um people listening on YouTube and thing. Yeah, somebody on one of the things. I was pleasantly surprised to see the podcast come up on such and such location. I was like, what? Wow. Yeah. I didn't even think that would make a a, a blip on the radar. But yeah, now when I watch the analytics, I've seen people listening to it from other places now. Because okay, apparently cool. everybody do like Spotify. Or Apple. Yeah, I, I do ask what I use Apple. I don't ask Spotify. Nah, I use um I use in Pocket Cast right now. Because Google Google Podcasts switch into YouTube music and YouTube music is trash. <laughs> well, YouTube music is like Spotify. Just try to push all kind of things down your throat and I really all I want yeah. to do is listen to the thing, but podcast is no longer audio. Podcast is video, and they really want to push video for your podcast all the time. Like, all the time. It, it bothers me. But 
What are you gonna do? What bothered me is Microsoft taking um <laughs> taking snapshots of your whole life. <laughs> Apparently it bothered a lot of people also. Wait, wait, before yeah. we go to that, one other yeah. thing I wanted to say on the um, wellness app. Uh, you know, some like some persons might they may not use it because the you know, like for me, I might think all right, if it's sharing well some level of personal stuff of it's sharing some issue, put hypothetical is you having with some a boss or a team member or whatever, right? And they're sharing it with this app. How are you so sure that data not being collected in the background and somebody else could see what you're doing, you know, in terms of the privacy and stuff like that? And they said HIPAA compliance. Um, yeah. <laughs> you want to see us? I feel as skeptical about everything. <laughs> Uh, he stoops. He's like, yeah. you can tell me anything about being hippo compliant. Yeah, like, 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 like I don't know. Like for me, I even like in chat on WhatsApp and whatever. It has certain things I will say, and sometimes yeah. if I know how to talk about someone, I'll be like, yeah, let me get a call. But <laughs> some things I'm like, yeah, I don't feel like writing. <laughs> like wow. how, I would say paranoid, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's probably less data, but <laughs> it's a cat. Yes, it's a, it it charges us up when you record and you're supposed uh, to take a screenshot. Uh, you know? What you doing now? You feel you so important that somebody gonna listen to your phone conversation, boy? The boy will be listening, but it, it might be recorded and stored somewhere in a in a data center in Switzerland. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> recorded and stored all right that's the segue that's the segue to the next one when they record and store everything that you do on windows that's kind of weird especially if you browse the web for weird things i'll give you an example and i'm not going to talk about pornography in today's digital age every business is a strong online presence to reach new customers and stay competitive but not every business needs a complex website or full-fledged e-commerce solution to make it simple tt we understand that every business has unique needs and we offer a range of tailored solutions to fit those needs. Over the years, we've helped many businesses. Our services include website design and development. We create a professional and user-friendly website like these that represent your brand and drives results. Invoicing and payment processing. We can streamline your billing process with a user-friendly invoicing system that integrates seamlessly with most payment gateways and you can receive online payments easily. We also do automated order forms, which allows you to collect orders online and customer information effortlessly and send back automated emails emails, notifications, and reminders, and then you just have to make the sale at the end. And in some cases, we offer custom software development where we can create a specialized software system that meets your business's specific needs. But the key to all this is that we make it simple. If it's not easy for you to use, then we fail. So you can contact us today to learn more about how we can help make your business more successful. You can WhatsApp us at 1-868-308-8799 or you can visit makeitsimpletv.com forward slash business. All right, Microsoft is backtracking on screenshot in your life. So long story short, Microsoft coming out to these new AI PC, PCs using ARM processors and it's really good and it's, they're calling it Copilot plus PCs, which is AI infused PCs. When they infuse the AI in the PC, what it's going to do, it, they had a feature called um, recalls. Recalls means that you would be able to go back for up to two weeks and show they could show you anything that you look for if you ask the AI. So, first of all, when we when we spoke about this the first time, we both said, nope, nope. And you taking a screenshot of my screen every five seconds just so our AI could could take a um, could take the picture analyze it so that when i ask the ai wait now where did i see that website about elephants and then they will tell you the day the time and the website that you were on but and it's not it, and what we, what you were wearing too because <laughs> your webcam working too <laughs> <laughs> um because it's not actually but well, basically your browser is essentially recalls eh? mm -hmm. your browser is recalls in a nutshell but in this case, they touting it as AI is checking everything because not everybody using Edge. And if you're using Chrome, Microsoft can't access the Chrome data to do the search. 
So they just take screenshots, the AI analyze it, and the AI would, um, what's the word? The AI would do OCR, turn it into data, and then make it searchable so that when you ask AI, where did I see the elephant? It will be able to search the OCR data, which probably be like a JSON file or something, anything like that, whatever, and then tell you the date and time and pull up the picture that it analyzed to give you that information, right? Microsoft has backtracked on that and they said they are making changes to the controversial feature announced for its new range of privacy because it could be a potential privacy nightmare. Um, the company said that it will be an opt-in feature instead. So you won't come it, it won't come set up. You have to say, I want to turn it on. Now for me, right? It has certain things that I, I just have to search for that I don't really want in my um, history. So say, for example, one of them stupid songs that I'm sure us listen to in school. They'd be like, sir, 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 you gotta go on, you gotta go on, listen to this song. When I go on my YouTube, I just turn that YouTube on incognito. Mm -hmm. Because you know, I go and search for that and I don't want YouTube to even remotely think that I want to see anything else from this artist again. Right? Yeah, yeah. That happened to me with um, K-Man 6. When yeah, I had to go yeah. and watch the video and see the amount of violence that was taking place on it, I was like, don't even think YouTube, I want to see this fella again, right? Yeah. So I had to go on, on incognito for it. And the same thing has happened to me with Google search. Sometimes... I want to search for particular things, but I know how the search algorithm is going to work and I know the ads are going to try to pop up because I search for this thing and it's going to follow me along the internet. Latest example is solar, right? I want to do over my roof and when I do over my roof, I want to put solar panels on it one time. I make the mistake and I search for the solar panel, um, the process of installing solar panels on your roof, um, whatnot. And boy, for the past, like, six days, solar panel ads just finding me. I talking about mm -hmm. solar panel ads, articles, all kind of thing. Now, in, in some ways, I was happy because I was like, oh, we are learning more about this thing. I'm learning more about what's going on. But it really just, it really just shows that that kind of search privacy, that, well, that, that kind of thing where Google knowing where you search for and, and giving it that, it, it could follow you in, in ways that are very bad. Microsoft trying to create that same thing with the 10 billion, billion, million, billion, billion Windows devices out there. And this AI would basically collect all the data of usage patterns of people on Windows. And then Microsoft could say, yeah, we know you better than you know yourself. Use Bing. <laughs> and, and that... That's where this was going, and I am glad that it's not going to go there. They still have to figure out what to do about Google and Chrome, because Chrome is the biggest piece of spyware in the history of humanity. Like Chrome, Chrome collecting data. Even though they say Chrome doesn't collect data, just the other day Google had to admit that, yeah, we we'll collect data from Chrome. We don't really, we don't really keep it though, yeah. but we collect it. And another say. You know, they're, they're going to make it opt-in and you're going to have to say turn on. But you know, sometimes when you're setting up Windows or even installing software, that, that turn on does be like, you know, you think, okay, I need to do this. It's be a big button does, you know. Mm -hmm. Don't yeah. you want to turn this on? Are you sure? I'll make it yeah. click like three, four times. <laughs> you know, so yeah, uh, it is not... Um, it's not something that I'm going I set up a Windows PC. Um, I was, I've been setting up Windows PCs all the time because I'm yeah. fixing and reinstalling and whatnot. And it's have them little check boxes, the little dials thing. All of them must be on. Yeah. And it's a task to go and take off. Okay, not location, not this, not that, not that. Because they all come on. And all I want to do is click next, next, next. Yeah. But for some people, I don't know. Like for more vulnerable people, like when I'm setting up a PC for an uh, older person, I just be like, yeah, turn off all of that because they just couldn't get one set of random emails and you pop know, up messages and things coming up on the side. You know, and, yeah. well, well, I don't know, I guess they're probably doing stuff like this already in the background. You know, you get a laptop, establish an internet connection, and you just tell it have copilot or whatever, and you just tell it install Windows 10, don't. To activate whatever, whatever, and 
install these apps and it just do everything for you in the background. You don't have to worry about next, 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 next. You just do everything. I that's scary. You think so? <laughs> um, it's conveniently scary, but yeah. If you if you if you have person that really have a problem with most privacy issues because well your stuff out there and you're really gonna beat up too much about it, mm. then it's okay. But even me, who really have much of a problem with, with privacy and stuff because I understand the monster that we're dealing with it, everything out there, and it really ain't how much that you could do to, to hide from it besides not use the internet. And even if you do use the internet, they still have all the years that you did use it, and which basically gives you a profile of yourself until, unless you decide you're good and live in the hills and plant cassava or something mm-hmm. like that and change exactly who you are. But even for me, when they collect the data, it is a little a little um, annoying that they would use the data in such a, a kind of brute force way. And that's basically how businesses work. We find out something about you, we're going to try and sell you something, which yeah. is the how the economy works kind of. But I'd rather, I'd rather if they get the AI data that they do something nice about it. Like, I don't know. Um, we noticed that you've been on this website for a lot of times. Here are some other websites that give um, information about I would so hate so. that. I don't want you to suggest nothing to me. <laughs> I, I, I just know I like YouTube recommendations. Yeah. Sometimes I ain't gonna lie to you. Sometimes YouTube does recommend some good stuff for me when I when I go through YouTube and I'm looking for help on a certain thing. Like yeah, the yeah. T20 World Cup winner right now. And I rail into the science of cricket and the tactics behind it, right? Like the tactics about what ball to ball when with your field placement inside the power play and all them kind of thing. So I I hear them talking about something called an arm ball. And I was like, what is an arm ball? I never hear them say that one before. So I go on and I research in the arm ball on YouTube. And I was pleasantly surprised about the other um videos that they were able to show me the other channels and i find this cricketing channel that has basically explained everything for you in cricket mm. and with 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 great um with great accuracy and, and clarity so youtube does a good job for me in in terms of recommending stuff now if they're gonna use this ai thing this co-pilot pc to recommend based on my usage habits on windows i might turn it on because honestly i don't really have much to hide because i don't watch porn I don't have any like that very extremely sensitive date. What online banking do? Way. Damn it. <laughs> oh. All right. Yeah, now I got I in, I got in on. But remember a couple of weeks ago too, and I sure if it was Chat GPT or Google who was um they were demoing one of their AI um, tools or models. You mm. know, and they had the phone and the phone remembered where the wallet was based on yeah, 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 pointing yeah. the camera. So it's yeah. kind of the same thing, you know, it's always looking. Yeah. Always looking. But yeah, but how are you going to implement that and people just use online banking though? They had to have something in place to say, well, don't take a snapshot of my financial data. Yeah, that's, right. <laughs> that's, yeah, Microsoft, that real wild though. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Look, Microsoft said, the article actually says it. Uh, um, watch this. Microsoft said it built privacy into recall design from the outset and users would have control over what was captured, such as by opting out of capturing certain websites or not capturing private browsing on Microsoft Browser Edge. It says it, it says changes to the future would have given people a clearer choice to opt to saving screenshots during blah, blah, blah. Oh, sorry, okay. So, if I, so I had to go in the settings and say, do not take any snapshots of when I am on, when I'm on this website, when I'm on that website. That real granular. That real granular. Yeah. Nobody had time for that. Nobody had time for that. Your the value I had to get from that AI summary had to be so big that I had to be like, yeah, I'm gonna leave this one and I am going to black whitelist my no, webs, I, my thing. So similar to before, right? Was he yeah. what value going out of what was the use case for something like this? That they could tell me something about my how I use my computer and say, in, you know, if you enable this setting, you won't have to keep turning on your Bluetooth every single time. Or 
um, we notice that you always use Alt and Tab. But we have a new feature called Windows and Tab that will be able to switch between things. Or we notice that you usually minimize every window. There's a way for us to change some setting to um, automatically put the apps that you are going to use on a daily basis on, on the screen or something like that. Yeah, if you could, bro, not, if you not, could, none of that valuable to me. <laughs> efficiency of using using a machine, real yeah. valuable to me. It are sometimes I'll see some tool tips come up and I'll be like, wait, you could do that? Oh, okay, yeah. cool. I'm going to do that. So I'm not saying that alone, eh? but if yeah, the AI yeah, yeah. is if the AI is able to help me use Windows better because there are some buried features that I don't um take time to to go into. Yeah, but mm. you know that happened to you, that happened to you where it had a buried feature and you just kinda of find it and you stumble upon it and you're like, hey, wow, didn't know you could do this. Uh, nah, nah, don't act like nah. nah sometimes nah, if nah. I if I need to know how to do something, I'll Google it. Something yeah. I didn't know how to do on like I was accustomed to doing it on the Mac and I yeah. didn't know how to do it on Windows. Right. Can't remember what it was. Right. So it was, instead um, of you uh uh-huh. Doing a screenshot where you, where you, um, where you could select exactly the part yeah, of the screen yeah, that you yeah. want. Yeah, and I I was on Mac so long I forgot. I didn't know. Like when when you could have take screenshots. When I used to use Windows it was mm. the FN print screen. That all I didn't know yeah. about on Windows. Right. But now you could do Windows Shift and S. S. Windows Shift S. Yeah, Windows Shift so. and S. Right. Yeah. Right. So you have to Google that. If yeah. the AI Copilot AI could tell you something like that oh yeah we noticed that when you take screenshots you do a print screen then you open up the um photos app and then you crop it you can not do that by pressing windows shift and s that yeah but like for me i would not do print screen either that's google how to take a screenshot by selection <laughs> right but you you are a different person suppose it's be- it's betty and yeah, betty yeah, yeah. trying to um do some screenshots of her work to send it to somebody and every time Betty doing it, she doing this process over and over. If the AI picks that up and gives me something useful, that would be cool for Betty. And it'll be cool for a lot of people who just Yeah, you need know, to find you know what, what'll get me to use it. Oh. Remember Clippy? If they bring that <laughs> Clippy and Clippy is the one tell them about it, then yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because I didn't start. Yeah, you just you just wilding right now. That that's that's too nostalgic. Clippy was Clippy was scary to a lot of people, you know. Nah, like I didn't like a, Clippy. Our paper clip with eyes. That that that's concerning. <laughs> that's concerning. Yeah. So they backtrack on it. But if the opt-in could give me some propositional value, I mm. I would I would see myself opting in. And I think I want to, my laptop is like seven years old now. Wow. It's working good. Um, I have zero reason to upgrade it. But if a two-in-one um, PC come out, that is not a Surface. Your laptop bro. older than my daughter. <laughs> 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 my Lenovo ThinkPad Yoga, that is, that is the best laptop that ever. ever. I have a, and I have a ThinkPad X280, I think. Yeah. That that's still working too. This the monitor, the screen kind of giving some trouble, but I just hook it up to external monitor. That thing's still pumping. Like ThinkPads. I don't know yeah. what it what, what it yeah, what it do cool, to them. Cool. Yeah, I, I had a ThinkPad too that last me from form six all the way till graduating UE. And I think I end up learning more, well it's my wife now, but I was gonna give yeah. her another time to use yeah. it too. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah think pads. Think fast this up. So when Lenovo bring out their ThinkPad two in one with the with the arm, I might think about doing it because I'm very very interested in this arm in this yeah, new but my, Windows on arm. My ThinkPad was IBM. That was before. Well, yeah, yeah, that's before Lenovo buy it by over way. Yeah, throw back here, yeah, yeah. <laughs> IBM used to make them pad before this a little Lenovo. Yeah. And Lenovo was like, yeah, we'll take that. All right. <laughs> Yeah. Time for the random story. But the random story, we, we're choosing it, right? We, we, we yeah. chose any random story and uh, make no apologies for it. We're not going to Google and find a random story. But this random story has so much kicks. Like, you will you will, you will laugh. It's very techy. So, I just told you all that I'm watching, um, I'm watching the T20 World Cup and a lot of the things that I want to 
I like a lot of the things that they that I want to know about the strategy and tactics of cricket and the terms that some of the commentators has used has actually go to Gemini and ask questions and let Gemini answer all the questions and follow up. Like, why would a why would a team do this? What type of pitch will do this? If the pitcher is doing so and so, what they say? When they say this, and Gemini will just be answering me, normal, normal, and I real glad because AI using our AI to answer your questions way easier than Googling. Because Google would have given my website out to go and check. And the AI does give you YouTube channels too. So I'll be like, yeah, with it. They say, yeah, you can check this YouTube channel to find all the information. I'll be like, well, thank you, Gemini. You come today and tell me that the, <laughs> the winner <laughs> of the US versus Pakistan game, <laughs> the captain of the team, is the captain? Yeah, our US <laughs> cricket team. The captain of the US cricket team. Is a, is a part-time cricketer because he's an oracle engineer. <laughs> Yo. Yep, and he's an Indian immigrant. Well, Born in India. I, <laughs> the whole of USA and Canada team is immigrants, right? There is nobody named Phil or nobody named Brad. Everybody is something Singh or, or some sort of Indian name, right? So, no, but, but think of it, right? Use Pakistan. Use our profession. That is your profession. I always do. And I'm <laughs> man, who's a man who's a, in, who's a Oracle engineer. A right? And one. I think he's like a like a manager or something too. He's a part-time cricketer. Let me read it. Come out beat you. Subrad Nevalask Netravalkar. Right. Netravalkar. Spends his workdays as a principal member of Oracle's technical team, flexing his professional skills at the software company, according to his LinkedIn profile. But on Thursday, he uses cricket skills to help lead the men's U.S. team to a historic victory and stunning upset at the Grand Prairie Cricket Stadium in Texas. <laughs> in addition to being a top-notch techie, never a car or whatever it is, is also a left-hand fast bowler on Team USA. He's been a, a, a team member since 2018, per his LinkedIn. Before... <laughs> Listen to his, his, his credit, right? He is simultaneously risen through the ranks of Oracle as one of the largest software companies in the world. According to his LinkedIn, he joined the company in 2016 as a member of their technical staff. He was promoted to senior member in 2018 and again promoted to principal member in 2022. Before that, he earned a master's degree of computer science from Cornell in 2016, a bachelor's degree in computer engineering from the University of Mumbai in 2013. This man is playing cricket as a side hustle. Yeah, and on that, so in LinkedIn, you know, you have that same thing. Um, on the experience, you have Oracle yeah. principal member, technical yeah. staff, yeah. Cornell graduate, teaching assistant, and he also has team captain and professional cricketer, USA Cricket, <laughs> 2018 to present. Oh, man. Oh, man. Killing it in the cloud yeah. and killing it on the field. So, I mean... Yeah, you know, there's always say any tire, yeah, yeah, um, extracurricular activities that he extracurricular activi activity. I want to know, I want to know how he apply for leave. What, what he, what, what he does right on the, on the form or what he does do when he fill it out online. Nice, nice, nice show. He probably apply for vacation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they probably vacation. Imagine, yeah. imagine you, you call in sick and then they watch you on TV and you bowl a man <laughs> middle stump. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this, this is crazy. No, I know there are people who's playing the um, PFL, the Trinidad and Tobago um, Football League. And yeah, footballing is their side hustle. Them working yeah, cause army, they working delivery. How much they does this pay? Like three thousand. This pay minimum wage. Five thousand. Yeah, yeah. The the, the the best the best men have get five thousand. Yeah, um, and on that's that. like yeah, you can't really do much yeah. in certain settings. You know? So what I saying is the man making his bread, and all you can't take that away from him, and he going to. If he come out of the group stage, he, yeah. the, his team gonna get a cool two hundred and fifty k US. I think the the prize money is once you come out of the group stage, two fifty a quarter yeah. million. And if you make it further, it go up by um a quarter again. So it'll be like half a million. And then if you make it to the semifinals, you get a million. And if you win, you get two point something. If you lose, you get one point seven five. Some kind of thing like that. 
So he could come out of there making bank and then go back to Oracle and be like, hi guys, um, you'll finish deploying that app to the server. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, remember you was talking earlier about immigrants and going to, to, to the US and going yeah, back to yeah, yeah. Look, He's an example. He leave and he, he prospering. You know, yeah, he ain't, yeah, talk, yeah. ain't thinking about being an expat. He <laughs> represents so, the whole country. So you're telling me a Trinidadian who's play cricket could go across there yeah. and be like, yeah, when I apply for the US national team, yeah, I played, I played cricket for, um, for Queen's Park <laughs> and and then they automatically get a green card because you know USA want to be in every sport. Yeah, That's why they host it. That's why they host the yeah, New York Cup. But in he is cricket, is he is he side also, and you know, but that that I as Pakistan, I feel I feel this is like, this <laughs> well, how much other how much other people on the side on the on the US side is um part timers? Yeah, too? probably that's, are looking to that. That's yeah, that's what we gotta check. I <laughs> nah, feel that re- that hmm, that like. Like you playing any and Pakistan, Pakistan, oh, Pakistan good these days? Can't know. Nah, they, nah, they, nah, they bad these days. They, okay, they, okay, they okay. good these days in terms of the way that they they playing T twenties. In the last World Cup, they were good, yeah. but then they drop off real bad and they're very inconsistent. But they're not supposed to be as bad as USA. Yeah, you get because USA, some, you know, you, you know, in football, yeah. they call it uh, like farmers league. Like yeah, fa- the time. farmers league. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this, this Sunday league, this Sunday yeah. league, you get beat from man in this Sunday league. Yeah, yeah. from the postman. Yeah, yeah, that man is a yeah, he's a postman, a carpenter. <laughs> you know, in this case, now nah, you get beat by a man, but a, a techie, a, a software engineer. Yeah, 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 yeah. A software engineer, come and beat you. <laughs> A nerd, yeah. yeah, a nerd come on me too. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I mean, historically speaking, cricketers tend to be the nerds, but <laughs> they tend to be the ones that play the non-contact sports. <laughs> I play cricket and football in school, so. <laughs> but you you push yourself towards football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because the, the cricketers, they were just too good at it. And they just be like, how are you so good at at spinning a ball? Like, well, I, I can't play football, so I tell you now to do this. <laughs> it was it would be tough. Yeah, this was funny. This was quite funny. Thank you very much for showing me that because I nearly die when I see it. <laughs> I nearly die. All right, y'all. That's our one fifteen minutes. We are steadily climbing to our one fifteen minutes for our podcast. We was an hour before, then we went to our one five minutes, and our one ten, and then our one fifteen. But y'all seem to have a problem. So if you don't have a problem, we don't have a problem. It's cool. And we spoke about today. Tobago internet should be better now, and went into a lot of economics. I'm sorry about that, but I guess some of y'all will be probably happy and probably have things to say. Because it kind of stem into politics. And whenever we start to talk about politics, people just be happy and just be like, yeah, yeah, tell them. Tell them PNM. Sorry, yeah, all right. Um, <laughs> when employees use wellness apps, we kind of try to f- try our best to figure out if they would use it, but we can't find a use case. And Microsoft backtracks on screenshot in your life, which is a good thing. And the last thing was the um, Oracle engineer. <laughs> <laughs> or cricketer and that will go and pause the caption or or full time cricketer <laughs> part time nah, nah, nah the man if this work out for him he could he could start to go and play in the, um, in the IPL nah but well according to that I'll pay more than Oracle you know you don't know IPL, Oracle IPL, pay, man. Yeah, he IPL probably pay. has stock options too you know IPL paying you more than Oracle. All right, okay, okay, I promise, okay, yeah, I yeah. promise you that IPL paying you more. They might even give you much job security, yeah. but they, the, the one time payout you get from your contract, yeah, you, you could do a lot. You could do a lot. Ask DJ Bravo. You know, yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's it, there, kids. I mean, not kids. Whew. I'm I, I talking like I do in a YouTube live. When I do new YouTube live for the trainers, be like, that's all, kids. That's all, folks. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. time. 
yeah, that, uh, that, that's it there, listeners. Thank you very much. Big up to all the people that send us messages, all the people that comment on the different platforms. I cannot remember the name of the fellow that commented on YouTube. But while you tell them what your name is and where you're from, I'm going to try to find it. Oh, yeah, comment. Akeem from Redbit, Redbit underscore tech. Find me on, on most platforms talking about technology. Nice. And that things. And that thing. You do and any the, videos? And that sort. Huh? I had, you know, I've had ideas and I wrote it down, but I ain't got time. Let me just let you know. I have videos backed up right now, uh, right? Yeah, I have videos backed up, and I might get to the point where I have one a day. Okay, okay. Might, but nah, stretching them out to every other day right now. Because I did, I don't know when more videos going to come. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but I have ideas. Yeah, so you can find me at Make It Simple TT. Let me shout out Michael Peer. He's the one that, um, that listened to us on Pocket Cast. And... Somebody else messaged me on Instagram other than the regular Samuel and um, Samuel, not Samuel, Montel Innes, I think his name is. Yeah. Montel Innes, yeah. He messaged me on Instagram and um, shouted out. So shout out to you guys. And also shout out to Dion. Dion Eccles. He... He told me something the other day. Remember when you were talking about the um the being able to call and use data at the same time? Mm-hmm. Right. He gave me a use case of where calling and using data at the same time is a thing that people need, which is ride share drivers. Oh yeah, ride yes, yes, ride yes, share, yeah, ride share drivers need to have the map up and be able to call the person to go and pick them up. And apparently that works in the states, but it doesn't work here. So, yeah. So. That's it there for today, folks. Thank you very much. Well, that's it there for this week. So if you see any articles or anything you want to talk about or anything that we said that doesn't make sense or you have insider information about it, let us know. We have a whole slew of interviews coming up in July. So you all could look out for that also. And don't forget to share it with anybody who listens to technology. And when you're having conversations with people and you're like, wait, have anybody that's, that actually know about technology or talk about technology in Trinidad, tell them to listen to the Trinity TechCast. We will see you all next week. Um, This is where we say bye-bye.